For more than 20 years, Saba University School of Medicine has been educating outstanding physicians. Dr. Giancarlo McEvenu, a 2010 graduate, was a member of the surgical team responsible for Canada's first successful hand transplant. At a presentation in Toronto, he described his education at Saba and his involvement in this landmark achievement. My name is Giancarlo McEvenu, uh, Dr. McEvenu, and I'm a plastic surgery resident here at the University of Toronto in my final year. I'm very excited to talk to new students, and so, uh, you know, I'm just going to give you basically my story. So, catchy title, From Tiny Island to Canadian First. I'll start at Saba. It's a beautiful island. It's a Caribbean paradise. The weather is amazing. You know, for lifestyle, I think it's really good. There's a rainforest there that you can go hiking and running, and there's like these tide pools where the ocean comes in and I took this photo I'll take photo cred it's awesome like I mean if you put that on your snapchat your friends will be going crazy I had fun putting this talk together because that's me on my first day in the hospital with one of my best friends Saad he's an anesthesiologist in New York City right now and we still hang out like he obviously lives in New York so we can't hang out as much as we did on Saba but I mean, you're gonna make great friends there and I had a really good experience. And I come from Toronto, so I was good at ball hockey. So we won the ball hockey tournament every semester. And we won the soccer tournament every semester. And this is my mom at my graduation. And I put these up because, I mean, I went there and it wasn't this big scary thing and I had like some of the times in my life. And when I put these photos together, I was like, man, I missed that like, you know, experience that I had down there. And it, it all comes down to this. Like, I matched plastic surgery in Toronto. As an IMG, you know, I went away. People would tell me, you're going to be a family doctor in Kentucky. And I was like, well, I don't care. I'm going to be a doctor, and that's what I want to do. And, you know, if that's your attitude towards me, I'm going to show you different. And, uh, you know, I worked my butt off. I studied a lot. The opportunity's there. And say will give you the opportunity, and it's what you make of it. And... Uh, you know, this was one of the best days of my life. I, know, I remember calling my mom that morning, and she was like, uh, I told mom, I matched the plastic surgery. This is the best. Like, my cousin and me are jumping around the living room, hugging each other. And uh, I felt like I won the lottery. And uh, mom's like quiet on the other end of the phone. And I was like, mom, like, I matched the plastic surgery. Hello? And she's like, well, it's kind of, like, I'm happy. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, She's like, well, I want you to help people, and you, you know, you're going to be doing like boob jobs and stuff. <laughs> I was like, Mom, haven't I taught you anything? Like, plastic surgeons help people look better. No, we do we do other stuff too, right? Like uh, microsurgery, and and I had to explain to her why it was a good thing that I'm coming home to Toronto to match the surgery. And then after I explained it to her, she was like, okay, I'm happy now. So. I mean, the opportunity's there, and the results speak for themselves, and a lot of my friends matched very competitive residencies, and they worked hard. Like, there was kind of a little joke, like, some people shouldn't be applying to med school. It's true, like, you have to look, really evaluate yourself. I knew my grades were good, but they, you know, it's, you, we all know it's hard to get here in Toronto. They weren't the best. My MCAT was good, it wasn't the best, but I had this dream, I had this passion, I knew that you know, just give me a chance, like, guys, just put me, put me in coach, I'm gonna win, you know? And that's me at graduation, again, my buddy saw it all the way through, and, you know, just some fun photos, like, just looking back at, at the journey, and there's my mom and Brad, and they were exciting, and now she's happy about plastic surgery, now she's like, my son's a plastic surgeon. And then the next step after Saba is residency, and if you work hard, and, you know, it doesn't matter what specialty you want, like, I originally wanted to do cancer research. That's what I thought was my passion. And then I went into uh, the anatomy lab at Seba and like start cutting open a body. And half my group was like hiding from the body. And me and this other guy were like right in there. And he became an orthopedic surgeon and I'm a plastic surgeon. So first day of class, you'll know who the surgeons are. I think my mom took this photo. But that's my first day at St. Mike's residency. And it was like, man, this is a dream come true. So from residency, I've had so many incredible opportunities. Like, I got to teach some students, like, how to suture. You know, when you're a medical student, you're the focus of the teaching, and everyone's like, oh, you got to take care of the medical student. You got to take care of the medical student. And then when you finish medical, uh, medical school, then you got to realize, okay, maybe now I got to take care of the medical student a little bit. And then, you know, you kind of always are returning the favor. And then when I'm almost done my residency now, and when I graduate, then it's going to be my turn to, like, teach some residents.
So it's kind of interesting at your phase, it's like everyone's focused on you and you because they want you to be the next generation of doctors. And now I'm at this phase where I'm going to be looking back. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And then it kind of led up to this. So this was kind of probably the biggest professional achievement in my life so far. I hope there'll be more. Um, it was the transplant. So, you know, everything I'm going to talk about was on the news and about, uh, you know, on CBC and the University of Toronto. The same medical school I couldn't get into. Hello. <laughs> I'm on your front page now. Ha ha ha. You know, that happened. So uh, I was so lucky to be, I mean, I think luck played a big part in it because I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, I was in the plastic surgery program. My boss, Steve McCabe, there he is, awesome guy. He's my, one of my mentors. Uh, you know, he put this program in place for five years. So this wasn't like, you know, I came in and they were like, hey, let's do a hand transplant today. It was a, you know, a huge process and it's so complex. Like, uh, not just technically, but the patient, selecting a patient, selecting a donor, having the right donor match. You may not know this, but Toronto is one of the leading transplant centers in the world for lung transplant. And they have, you know, they did the first lung transplant here, and they have an incredible experience. And now they're trying to do that, you know, with other organs. And you know, with a with a kidney, you don't have to worry about the color of the kidney. But you know, when you're transplanting someone's hand, you need the right skin match. You need the right uh, sex match, actually, because you know you don't want it like Seinfeld man hand handshake. <laughs> That'd be weird. Um, so this man, Steve McCabe, he set this program up. He was the surgeon in the first hand transplant in the world, in Kentucky, and the University of Toronto recruited him to do the same thing in Canada, and he did it. And uh, you know, I had the opportunity to work alongside this guy, and he was like, uh, on the first day of rotation, he's like, Giancarlo, we might be doing a hand transplant, do you wanna be, and I was like, yes. And he's like, okay. Uh, and the night before the surgery, like I was up all night doing uh, replants. So, you know, people don't know this, mom, listen, plastic surgeons help people other than cosmetics. Um, you know, someone had, uh, had uh, amputated a few fingers and I had reattached them and I was up the whole night. And he was like, you know, we got the donor and uh, it's gonna go tonight. And I know you've been up all week. And I'm like, I'm in. I'm gonna go take a nap, but I'm in. And, uh, and so I had the opportunity to come and this is kind of what you're dealing with. And this is in the news, like, she was a nurse, she'd been in a car accident, and she'd lost her arm traumatically. She couldn't do her job anymore, and she'd felt like she'd lost herself, and you know, she, they did psychological screening, and they did this huge workup, and we're like, you know, we can give this woman her arm back, and we can give her function, and, and, and you know, to be a part of this is so special. And so, of course, when he called me in the morning, I'm like, yeah, I was tired, but like, of course I'm gonna be in on this. And so, you know, they have to put a cap on the number of people in the operating room. And I'm kind of like the lowest of the low. There's no med students in this operation. Uh, but the resident is kind of like the lowest because, you know, you've got a team of nurses. You've got a team of anesthesiologists. You've got a team of surgeons, right? You have a team that's going to get the organ. You have a team that's going to put the organ on. And then you have, like, expert. You have the nerve guy, the, the, the vessel guy, the skin guy. The skin guy's the resident. And, uh, you know, it was incredible. And so you can see all the hands, like, getting in on this on this operation and I was part of the preparation team. And so I'm the guy with the, so okay, this is kind of a funny story. Everyone's like knows the operation's coming. So I'm like, I'm gonna wear my best scrub hat. So I pick my Star Wars hat and all like the other surgeons, they didn't even think about that stuff. I'm like, am I weird? But then my boss picked his best scrub hat. So I was like thinking on the same level as my mentor. Anyway, so this is what it involves is like, you know, really complex, culmination like these are world experts that have trained you know for many years in this um, state-of-the-art um, kind of sh doing a Canadian first and it was incredible experience to be a part of and I say like you know as the resident it was almost uh, such an amazing opportunity because no one kicked me out of the room like when the nerve guys came in they kicked the artery guys out when the artery guys came out they kicked the bone guys out so it was like everyone's getting kicked out but the, it was like oh John Carlo you stay here like you come come in here I need your help with this hold this thing you know and so you know I wasn't quarterbacking it but I was like I was the grinder I was I was there for like the whole thing and it was incredible and then you know that's some people may not know how small these blood vessels are but it's under a microscope and that's what these guys are looking at and they're reattaching this. And, you know, I do this all the time now because I've been trained, you know, but this is like kind of like the Stanley Cup. And this can't fail because everyone's watching. 
And then this is the moment the hand literally went from like a pale white to like a reddish pink to like a normal skin color. And it was like oh, amazing. Like I still get like pumped up even just talking about it because when you think about how much work, how much um, planning uh, goes into it, like that's one thing, but like you're giving this woman her hand back, like, hello, mom, look, <laughs> right? And like that was kind of like the finished result on the table. And then you get into a photo like this, which gets on the front cover of the newspaper. And it's like, you know, a dream come true. I'll tell you a funny story about this. So it's been like 17 hours. All the, you know, the teams have left. It's kind of the skin. It's kind of like the resident's job. Like you close the skin, you do this. And, and the photographer who had been there like for 17 hours was like done, like asleep in the corner. And I was like, hey, we're finishing. You probably should take photos over here. Like this is an important part. And that's what ended up on the CBC. That's me. Uh, you know, it was like a big deal. And I knew it was a big deal, but it was like a really big deal. And then uh, like an artist drew a painting of that photo. And my boss like gave a copy of that photo. And I mean, this all came about because, you know, I didn't give up on my dream. I was told by medical school like, oh, you know, you're on a wait list. I don't know if any of you have been on a wait list, but I feel your pain. We can talk about it afterwards and hold hands. But like, you a whole summer, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, like, I'm in, totally in, totally in. September, it's like, you're not in. It's like, oh, not again, I gotta apply again. I'm going to the Caribbean. And that's what I did. And like, uh, you know, so six months later, this news story just came out. And look at that quote. Canada's first hand transplant patient says surgery has made her whole again. Like, if that doesn't t give you, like, a great feeling of, like, this is a job well done, like, the money, the planning, the training, the sweat. Yeah, I didn't sleep for, like, two days. But, like, that was for an important reason. That's why I became a doctor, to do these kind of things. And, like, look at that. It's, it is awesome. And I was a part of it. I'm not taking credit for any of this. I was a small cog in the machine. But, like, it was awesome. So some fun numbers. So how do you get to that? I mean, I did four years undergrad. I did two years of master's. That was torture. I was doing it to get into med school. I did four years of the med school, six years of residency. You know, it's a five-year program, but, you know, life happens. Um, I've written so many exams, MCAT, USMLE 1, USMLE 2, USMLE 3, all passed very well, actually. I'll put a note on that. If you want to match into a competitive specialty, you have to kill those exams. That's because that's how they stack you up. Um, and then my next kind of on the horizon is the Royal College exam. So that's your, you know, whenever you finish a, uh, whatever residency it is, you have to write a board exam in the US and here it's called your Royal College. And that's just to make sure you're safe for the public. They're not gonna like unleash you without passing that test. And I'm also planning on doing my US board exam so I can say I'm double board certified, but I can't say that yet. So you just heard me say I'm gonna say that. Didn't say that yet. And at my total cost, I think it's important. Like I was actually really interested in that financial my costs aren't that much different than it is now. So it's, that's kind of awesome like, that they haven't inflated the prices that much. Um, so my total cost about 250000 And then you know, when you get residency, you get paid, but you're not really paying that loan off. So I mean, what is it, the visa ad where it's like the cost of a hand transplant, priceless. That's what I should have put here. And I always think of the good joke afterwards. But hey, that's me. I'm getting ready for my final exam. And so thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure speaking, honestly.